Allow me on the call. Hi, Bim. Hello. So, first of all, um, how are you getting on and how are your family getting on in this lockdown? Tell us all about your sort of personal experiences. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, that's a, that's well, my thing you want to start with. Well, I mean, I think the first thing is, when, when you started your introduction, you said there was going to be light entertainment, heavy entertainment. I hope I'm not the heavy entertainment. <laughs> so, uh, 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 we'll, let, we'll, let the, we'll let the listeners judge. Yeah. <laughs> well, well so, so the first thing to say is that, um, is that uh, I, I live just outside a village, so not very far from Redbourne at all, just outside the village of Markgate, so not far away. And yep. so it is um, much nicer, I think, living in a lockdown in a village than it is a sort of town um, because there's more space, it's quieter, etc. And it just feels a bit nicer, especially if the weather has hitherto been pretty good. Um, we've got three small boys, which is, you know, a bit much, frankly. Um, one is six. One is, there are three of them. One is six, the other one is four, and the other one is one, um, which is, you know... Uh, time-consuming and noisy. Uh, apart from that, my wife's running a business at the moment, um, runs a family business, which, like everybody who runs a business, is facing a pretty tough time at the moment. So that's, yeah. you know, yeah. tricky, but I'm, I'm sure there are many people, because I know there are many people in Redbourne and around who have similar things, so I, can, I feel their pain. Uh, and, but overall, it is all right. And I'm very lucky that, you know, we've got enough space and we've got a nice place to live, which a lot of people are not lucky enough to have. Absolutely. And as you said, living in a village like this, is it going to be locked down? It is, it is a quite a nice place to be, isn't it? Because we, at least we, there's lovely countryside around it to go out, social distancing, walking, cycling, whatever it might be. Exactly. So um, that said, what have you found most difficult, do you think, personally, during this period, personally? Well, not being able to talk to lots of people in face-to-face, because -face, I'm a rather sort of garrulous character, and this is sort of terribly painful, not being able to see people and talk to them and hug them and kiss them. Kiss them in an entirely appropriate way, might I add. But, um, of course, yes. We're, we're still not reached the watershed, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think for people like me, uh, it is really painful not being able to just see people and to hang out with people. That is what yeah. I find difficult. Well, it would also be um, remiss of me not to mention that my father is a consultant anaesthetist in Hemel, Watford and St. Albans, that trust. And so I think, you know, though we're not a terribly emotional bunch, um, the men in my family, it is a bit yeah, you know, we are slightly worried about my dad, sort of, and he's not a terribly careful guy, you know, about, you know, he, he just sees his job as getting the job done and protective equipment and all that, and that, that's all a bit tricky. That's a bit worrying. Um, but apart, that, that, they are the things that are most difficult, I think. Okay. Uh, and what about positives? Um, um, I ask because we, we've had obviously lots of chats in the village. It's not all bad. For example, one of my friends... And one of the people who dialed into this call has discovered that sausages can be eaten for breakfast, which amazes me, which I didn't realise it was ever not possible. But uh, on, on, on a serious note, though, have you found any good things that come out of this? Uh, well, I eat sausages regularly for breakfast, so you know, three cheers to them um, <laughs> right. um, for finally recognising what the wiser ones among us have realised a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, other positives are... It is okay to drink in the afternoon during the week. I mean, again, <laughs> not to do this excessively, but yeah. in a normal work day, this would just not be, you know, that common. But now it is more common. And you know what? That's not all bad. Another thing is I'm probably doing more exercise than I normally do because you sort of feel you should. Yeah. And that is definitely a positive. Um, you know, I cycled the other day uh, with my children and my wife um, to Flamstead and back again, to, to Markgate to Flamstead and back. Now, that doesn't sound like that far, but it's actually round trip took about an hour and I was pulling on the back a four-year-old who we knew wasn't going to last the cycle. 
They're the six-year-old one. And I would typically never do that. Yeah, I mean, I would typically never do that. I mean, that's just a fact. I'm always too busy. And actually, that is a positive. And so trying to keep the exercise going, and I'm not just saying this because Rachel Mackey and Ivan are on the call, because they're terribly keen on the exercise, but keeping the exercise going is really important. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Now, talking about, um, you mentioned about a normal work day there. One of the things I think we're all interested in asking you is how, how has the lockdown affected your work as a member of parliament? Well, it's, on some level, it's all right, because a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is, uh, especially up, you know, a few weeks ago, was dealing with people whose businesses have been affected, um, people whose kids, you know, worrying about getting their kids into school or taking their kids out of school, and... There's been a lot of constituent, a lot of constituency work in that regard, and to be honest, you can do quite a lot of that from home because it's normally speaking to the treasury or another government department and then speaking to constituents or emailing them. But the other bit of your job as a member of parliament, of course, is a national legislature, and not being able to be in Westminster. Uh, and Parliament has started up again, but they've discouraged MPs for going, so we're doing a sort of virtual Parliament, which, which you know, they're doing the best they can, but it's not the same, means yeah. that you can't do what you normally do, which is get in groups and figure stuff out and go and get ministers to change their mind or go and see the Chancellor about something else. Now, because everybody's remote, it's actually much harder to get through to people and actually to figure out what's going on. So constantly people are saying, what's going on with that thing? And I say, well, I don't know. And I'll call somebody and I'll call somebody else, I'll call somebody else. And I might figure out after two days what's going on. But actually, normally, if I was in the House of Commons, I'd find that out within 10 minutes. So it, sure. that is quite tricky. And it's not the formal part of the job of being an MP. It's not the speeches and the questions that's hard that's really been affected or the constituency work. It's the informal stuff. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I'm presuming you're now a Zoom guru along with the rest of us. Is that correct? Well, yes, even though my head hurts when I do too much Zoom. I mean, it's a terribly painful exercise. I think everybody, you, you know, and also you, you spend so much time, I find with Zoom uh, or any sort of video conferencing, that you, it's really hard to look at the camera rather than look at the screen. So yeah. actually, nobody's looking at each other. Everybody's looking down in a sort of desperately unattractive way. I mean, I don't know anybody who looks good on Zoom. You know, so, so frankly, I want to get back to face-to-face -face as, as much as possible. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a massive amount of news coming out. Uh, been all the time about the coronavirus and what, what's going on. Is there anything you can tell, um, not necessarily any, anything secret, is there anything you can tell the residents of Redbourne that they might not know um, from the newspapers or the news? Have you got any sort of... Well, it depends whether they want to... Boris, not putting you on the spot a bit. Well, it just sort of depends whether people are going to go and put this out on social media and I'll get in trouble or not. So I'm sure how about... Dream of it. Right, yeah, so I'm going to trust everybody, which is, you know, a very unwise thing to do, but let me do my best. So, the, what, yeah, exactly. Um, what is basically happening at the moment in government and around government are three main things. One is people trying to ascertain which scientists to believe. Yes. Because contrary to what, you might, what it might appear, you know, scientists are like lawyers or economists. You know, they, ha all, they all have different views. And it's a misnomer to suggest that there is one scientific view. That is not true. So, actually, the science is changing constantly. The views are changing constantly. And so a big job is actually trying to work out who to believe and who's right. So that's one thing. Another thing that is going on is inevitably... Um, trying to release the lockdown basically as soon as possible because businesses are really suffering and the impact on our economy, uh, and, it's, and this sounds a bit technical, but I think it's really important for people to appreciate. If you compare the British economy with, say, the French economy, the Italian economy or the German economy, or indeed the American economy, we depend a lot more on two things than all of those economies. One is services. So we depend a lot more on people selling stuff to each other that are services rather than physical goods. 
Mm-hmm. And the second thing we rely quite a lot on is trade. We rely a lot on the fact that people fly in and out of the country and goods go in and out of the country. Our companies are some of the best at trading with other countries because our internal market here in the UK is not that big. And we, for centuries, we've been leaders in trade. So this crisis hits our economy proportionally harder than it does lots of our partners. So there is a real awareness that we need to try and we need to really try and um, release the lockdown. But at the same time, you can't release it and then be where we were six weeks ago because, you know, then you're back at square one. So what we're really trying to do is to look at other countries very, very carefully and understand the interventions they're making with releasing because effectively we're doing it behind most of our European partners. So we actually are in a privileged position because we can just watch what they're doing and we can just judge what worked, what didn't work, etc. And over the next two months will be a process of calibrating that. Um, so my, my back of the envelope um, suggestion to everybody who's, who's thinking to themselves, how long is this going to go on for? Um, And how long am I going to spend all day in my pyjamas is not that I do that, by the way. That's what other people do that. I don't do that. But it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, (laughs) It is originally the prime minister said three months was the period of time that we'd have quite strong restrictions. I still think that that is a pretty good rule of thumb. So we are six weeks in, we're just over halfway through that. That is what I would suggest if people are thinking how long is this sort of quite tough restrictions going to last. I'm not saying everything, but when will things feel, in my guess, sort of largely-ish back to normal, I think probably six, seven weeks from now. And then there'll be a few things that will be trickier, and those will be large gatherings, you know, things of, you you know, big groups of people. I don't mean small social groups, I mean, you know, 50, 100, 200 people. Those sorts of things may well take a lot longer. But in terms of ordinary life, I would still think that the three months from when we started isn't a bad rule of thumb. OK, Ben, thank you. That, that, um, that's, that's good intel, actually, and thank you, thank you for that. Oh, no. Um, so we're, so we're, ne- we're, nearly, we're nearly at the end of our little bit. I've just got one question, if you don't mind, that my wife actually asked me to ask you. Oh, yeah. you, mentioned the prime, you, you mentioned the Prime Minister there, so what you wanted me to ask you was, did you send Boris a get well card, and did yeah. he reply? Um, well, I joined a get well card that was signed by all sorts of members of the Conservative Parliamentary um, Party. I didn't send my own one, I just thought that would be sucking up a step too yeah. far. Fair enough. Um, but, but he did send a reply um, to all the people who signed the card, so there we are. Very nice. What a what a decent chap. And he's just okay. had and he's just had a baby this morning. Yes, I felt I saw that a little bit of highlight on my phone. So congratulations to Boris. Yeah, so, my last question, my last question, Bim, and then um, it, we'd love you to stay on the call if you don't mind. Um, Go for it. I'm, I'm going to ask everybody that joins the calls uh, what book they're reading at the moment. So out of the blue, what book are you reading at the moment? And just tell us a little bit about it. I'm assuming you're reading I'm, a book. I'm sort of between books. So I'm going to give you two. One is um, a book called Citizen Clem, written by a very good friend of mine, John Pugh, about Clem and Attlee. And the okay. other one is that, that I'm looking at right now is Churchill's first vol- volume of his book on his ancestor, the, Duke, the first Duke of Marlborough, John Churchill. Okay. So you like, you, you like your history? I do. Political history in particular. Yeah. Very good. Super. Well, Ben, thank Terribly you very much. Very unimaginative. No, not at all. Not, I mean, I'm a fiction, more fiction man myself, but um, they sound like pretty good reads, particularly the Clem Attlee one. So, uh, anyway, that was it. Ben, thank you so much for that. Like I said, we only had about 10, 15 minutes or so, so it was a bit of a kind of a quick thing. By all means, stay on the call if you like. Are you happy to take some questions, by the way, from the audience, if they have any? Yes, yes, yes. Why not? So, good, good man. So, listen, guys, everybody out there,